Moa boleh dengar. Kalau dengar sila respon. Jelas tak suara? Boleh respon dekat chat ni. Eh? Siapa? Uh, sekarang kita dah ada 42 orang di live sekarang. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Alright, semua boleh dengar suara saya, betul tak? Okay, good. Alright, boleh dengar suara saya tak? Boleh uh, komen kat chat eh? Okay, terima kasih ya. Alright, Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera semua. Kita mulakan uh, open lecture petang ini dengan umur kita Al-Fatihah. Okey, amin, amin ya Rabbana alamin. Alright, today we are going to discuss about um, processor, memory and input output device because at 4 o'clock you are going to have UPS2. So let's uh, look at my screen. Okay, I hope that everybody can see my screen, processor, and you can see that we are going to discuss function, component, and steps in machine cycle. All right. So, if everybody is ready, let's proceed with today's lesson. All right, processor. What you need to know is the definition of processor. It is an electronic component on a computer's motherboard that interprets and carry out basic instruction that operates the computer. Okay. It is an electronic component and the function is to interpret and carry out basic instruction that operate the computer. Okay. So it is also called the central processing unit or CPU and the speed is measured in gigahertz. All right, next. Let's look at component of processor. Okay, there are two components of processor that you need to memorize. The first one is control unit. Okay, so the function of control unit is to direct and coordinate most of the operation in the computer. It is also decode the instruction and send the instruction to the arithmetic logic unit. Okay, this is the control unit. So let's proceed to arithmetic logic unit. Okay, what do arithmetic logic unit do? Okay, it perform arithmetic, comparison and other operation. Okay, so these are the arithmetic operation and these are the other operation and both Control unit and arithmetic logic unit work together to perform processing operation in the computer. If I'm fast, please stop me. Eh? And if you have any question, you can on your mic and also you can chat. All right. So let's see. The most important part in control unit, I mean in Processor is machine cycle. All right, so let's see. For every instruction, a processor repeat a set of four basic operations which comprise a machine cycle. So inside machine cycle, we have F test. Okay, fetch, decode, execute, store. 
So what happened in the fetch cycle? Control unit fetch the instruction or data from memory. All right, make sure. Okay, you remember. So decode. The control unit decode or translate the instruction into commands and send the instruction to the arithmetic logic unit. All right. And next, the arithmetic logic unit perform calculation on the data. And last but not least, the result are stored back in memory. Okay, so do you have any questions so far for steps in machine cycle? All right, you can check if you have any question. So make sure that you memorize all step in machine cycle. All right, all four step in machine cycle. So make sure you spell it correctly. Fetch, decode, execute, store, not storage. Eh? All right, next. Okay, this is the connected devices that the computer communicate with the processor to carry out certain tasks. So let's see. This is the processor and these are the component of processor which are control unit and arithmetic logic unit. So what happened here is data and instruction okay if we look at the machine cycle before, all right, are retrieved from memory. Okay, next. Okay, what involved in this stage? Maybe we are using our keyboard to key in data. All right. And after that, we uh, perform any processes in the computer, such as typing, calculating and many more and the data are sent by the control unit okay so that it can decode and send it to the arithmetic logic unit to perform any calculation involved and after that the arithmetic logic unit will perform it and send the result to it can be saved to memory. It can be displayed to the output device. For example, the computer monitor. All right. So let's proceed. Okay. This is what I briefed just now. The first step is users start a program. The instruction transfer from or retrieve from storage device to memory. Okay. It involves the memory. And after that, data needed by program enter from either input device or storage device, input device such as keyboard and many more. Control unit interpret and execute instruction in memory. And after that, it translate and send it to ALU so that ALU can perform calculation on the data in memory. And last but not least, the is stored back in memory. Okay, this is the most important part that you need to memorize. In exam last time. All right. So, here is fetch. Step in machine cycle. In, it involves both control unit and memory code or interpretation or translation part involve control unit every unit and after that the step execute it involve calculation is performed and after that the result so involve memory is the four steps remember okay just now i 
Now we look at CFIT. So what happens here is a user data is A equal to 100, B equal to 48 into the memory. So what specific to this equation so this is how you answer control unit fetch the instruction which is y equal to a times b and the data the data involved is 148 from memory next decode control unit interpret the instruction and send the instruction which is y equal to a times b and the data as well, 148 to arithmetic logic unit. And after that, arithmetic logic unit perform the multiplication of 148. Do not write here 4800 because at this stage, ALU only perform the calculation and the result of the calculation or multiplication which is 4800 is stored in memory. So this is how you answer a specific uh, question. Okay. Because it involves equation. Okay. Or mathematical equation. So this is how you answer. Please make sure you did not uh, what you call that uh, mix up between the general answer and the specific answer. So, all right, I'm going to skip this. This is the summary. All right, so let's look at some of the students' answer. Okay, I choose Ali's answer. All right, it is quite small, so I need to download it. We might um, use your smartphone and you might not be able to look. All All right, now, so this is um, information processing cycle, but for DC014, it is out of syllabus, so I'm going to skip this. So do not worry. So let's proceed to the next question. Most important of computer component is the central processing unit or process. So act as the brain of your computer. Describe the function of processor so it interpret and carry out the basic instruction that operates the computer. So very good. Explain the two main component of CPU or the processor. So CU it direct and coordinate most of the operation in the computer. That's what CU do. And ALU all right, since the name is arithmetic logic unit, it performs arithmetic comparison and other operations in the computer. All right, All right. So draw the four basic operation in the computer. All right. For this, I would. use this drawing okay so you see we have what happened in the first step involved control unit and memory next it and last but not least back to memory this one all right so let's proceed to the next question 
Okay. So I need to download this since it is too small. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to make it bigger because if you use your smartphone, you might not be able to read it. Okay, this is the question. For BC operation in a machine cycle, if this question comes out, it actually want you to answer the general basic operation in a machine cycle. All right, so this is the student answer. Okay, it will be uh, advisable for you to include here control unit obtain instruction or data from memory. And after that, control unit translate the instruction into signal the computer can execute. And after that, execute. It is the process of carry out the commands. And last, write the result to memory this is also acceptable all right oh sorry mm. all right it is better for you to memorize do not forget to include what? Control unit, memory, control unit, ALU, ALU, and store back to memory. Don't forget to include this part. All right, now, since uh, the processor questions are quite straightforward, let's proceed to memory. So what is memory? So this is the definition. Memory consists of electronic components similar to processor. They are electronic components that store instruction waiting to be executed by the processor. So this is what memory does. So the function is to store data and instruction waiting to be executed by the processor. And the second function is the result and also the result of processing the data all right so next there are two types of memory the first one is volatile and the second one is non-volatile there are three ways to write uh, non-volatile it can be with hyphen without hyphen or you can just write it in one word also acceptable so what is Volatile. Volatile means temporary memory. And non-volatile means permanent memory. All right. So, let's see. For volatile memory, volatile memory loses its content when the power is off. All right. Thus, it is temporary. So, please remember that it is temporary so it loses its content when the power is off and the example of volatile memory is random access memory or RAM. All right next. Okay I'm this and proceed to non-volatile. Before I proceed to non-volatile let's see types of volatile memory first. And then we will proceed to non-volatile. So there are three types of RAM, which are SRAM, DRAM, and MRAM. So SRAM, the chip does not uh, the chips do not have to be re-energized. 
dynamic RAM must be re-energized constantly. And for MRAM, since it uses magnetic charge, okay, instead of electrical charges. Make sure you remember, example of volatile memory is RAM. And example of RAM is SRAM, DRAM and MRAM. All right, so let's go to non-volatile memory. If volatile memory, which is a temporary memory, lose its content when the power is off, for non-volatile or permanent memory, it does not lose its content when the power is off. All right, since it is permanent. An example of non-volatile memory is ROM. Okay, so this is the answer that we want in the exam. The example is read-only memory, ROM. Do not put other example unless it asks for more. So please remember, volatile memory is RAM or random access memory and non-volatile memory is ROM or read-only memory. All right, I'm going to skip this since we will proceed to the uh, summary table later on. So there are three types of ROM, which is an example of non-volatile memory. The first one is PROM. It is a chip which allow programmer to write permanently. If PROM, it is erasable, okay, by exposing to ultraviolet light. And last but not least, EE PROM, it allow programmer to erase it using electric signal. Okay, so remember this one ultraviolet light and this one electrical signal. All right. Please memorize this table. So the difference between volatile and non-volatile memory is this one. Volatile, since it's temporary, it loses its content when power is off. Non-volatile, it retains its content when the power is off. The one loses, the one does not lose. Okay. And the difference between RAM and ROM, okay, since RAM is volatile, it is similar. It loses its content. ROM, since it's non-volatile, it's permanent. It does not lose its content when the power is off. All right. The next difference is it can be read and written by a processor while ROM, the data is pre-recorded for read only and cannot be removed. When you want to differentiate between these two, make sure that you differentiate the same thing. The first one talk about uh, its content and the next one talk about either it can be read and written by processor or whether it can be recorded for read only so make sure you compare the same thing do not compare volatile with data is pre-recorded for read only do not do that compare the same thing all right this is additional knowledge temporary scratch pad and this one uh store instruction on a special chip known as ROM BIOS or BIOS, something like that. Okay, I believe that you can read this on your own. So let's look at the student answer. All right, processor. Okay, now memory. Let's look at Puteri's answer. Oh, ada error. Never mind. Let's look at. Tadi Ali, sekarang Farah lah. I think I need to download this as well. I 
I'm so sorry, ma Madam Samila. I'm using your laptop. I've downloaded a lot. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wa alaikum salam. Okay, just now, I think this is it. I'm sorry, I did not see. Okay, I think. Where did I download it? Lost pula. Okay. I think better if I maximize here. Okay, the question here is, there are many types of memory card, not memory. Ha, this is where this student made a mistake. Kenapa ya? Kenapa ya? Sebab saya dah mark. Alright, tersilap buka. Oh no. Okay, it's okay if you make mistake during uh, tutorial class but do not make mistake during quizzes and exam. So there are many type of memory card, card that are used today. Give the example of them. So the answer is not volta or not volta memory. The answer is for memory card we have a lot. Okay, memory card. Memory card. We have micro SD, okay. All right, we have, uh, we have a lot, eh, actually. Could have, okay, here, we have micro SD. Can you see this? Okay. Um, just memorize the one that uh, you can easily write. Okay. As the adapter and many more. All right. And we do have 38 gigabytes, 64 and many more. Do not come up with your own uh, storage capacity. Okay. You put 10. There is no such thing as 10 uh, gigabyte. Oh, ada. Saya cakap laju sangat. Oh, ada. Boleh beli kat AliExpress. Okay. Hmm, pelik. Kalau ada 1 gigabyte. Oh, ada juga. Hmm, tak apalah. Kalau ada, kita terimalah. Tapi jangan reka sendiri ya. Okay, so let's look at um, my student answer. So tadi ada micro SD and the storage capacity you can write here 32 gigabyte 64. Any other acceptable answer? Okay, so let's proceed. Tak cukup besar ya. Okay. Just like human computer rely, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yang penting, state the function of memory in a computer. Okay, ini yang kita nak tahu. So, what is the function of memory in a computer? To store data and instruction waiting to be executed by the processor and the result of, of processing the data. Okay, so bila dah process ataupun process data, it will be information. So, very good. Okay, next. Okay, differences between volta and non-volta memory. For volta memory, we lose its content when the power is off. Non-volta memory uh, will keep. All right, very good. Very good. You use your own word. It's content even when the power is turned off. 
Okay, so jangan tertukar pula. Nanti hilang markah. So, remember, volatile memory. Volatile temporary. Non-volatile permanent. Okay, and then it is can be read from, it can uh, be read and written by the processor. For non-volatile, the data is pre-recorded for read only but it cannot be removed. Alright, example of volatile and non-volatile memory, random access memory, read-only memory. Jangan malas, hafal ya. Okay. Alright, this one, you can use short form. Type of RAM, SRAM, DRAM dan MRAM. Next, three type of ROM. PROM, EPROM, EE, PROM. Alright, manufacturers ni sebenarnya boleh Google. Alright, make sure the company or the manufacturers is, uh, it exists. Okay, ada pelajar saya tulis Microsoft. Bila saya Google, Microsoft tak produce uh, RAM. So, salahlah. Yang Arch Memory dengan Corsair ni memang ada. Alright, difference between RAM and ROM boleh letak ini juga. Okay, so... This one, okay, tiba-tiba kenapa saya bagi? Betul eh, senang je eh. Actually, this is temporary. Okay, saya termis. Temporary. And this one, it is a permanent uh, memory. So, it lose its content when the power is off. Alright, habis memory. Okay, yang tinggal cuma memory. Hmm, kejap. Kita akan fast forward to input output device which is the last um, topic for our discussion today. Sekejap ya. Yeah. Baru nampak. Okay. Alright. Terlalu banyak. Okay, soalan yang berkaitan dengan input output device. Sebab nota dia pun banyak. Sampai 90. So, selamat membaca dan menghafal lah. So, I will proceed to the most important part that you need to memorize. Please memorize the third and the fourth page in input output device um, subtopic. Okay, what is input? It is any data and instruction entered into a memory of a computer. It can be text, it can be number and many more. Okay, and output. It is the data that has been processed into information or into useful form. Such as when I input data 0, 1, 7, 4, 7, 0, 3, 7, 6, 1. I input key in one by one using the keyboard. Okay, so it is actually wrong. So, when it is processed into useful form, it is actually a telephone number in a telephone bill. So, that's why it is in a useful form. Okay, so make sure you are not confused with input device or output device. When there is a word device, it means it is hardware. So, any hardware component that allow user to enter data instruction into a computer. Okay, that's input. And uh, we can input by using a pointing device such as mouse, keyboard and many more. For output device, okay, any hardware component that convey information to people. When we key in using keyboard, we want to look at what we have key in before. We look at our monitor. So, it is like conveying information to people such as us. Okay. Not only monitor, you can print information using printer and you can listen using speaker. So, this is the mind map. I'm going to skip this. I'm going to only touch a little bit. Alright, so make sure you did not mix up between definition of input and input device. Remember, device is 
hardware. Alright. So let's look. Types of input device. We have keyboard, pointing device, touch screen, scanner, pen input, voice input. Video input, okay. Biometric input, game controllers, digital camera, audio input, and last but not least, smart board or interactive whiteboard. So I'm going to touch a little bit because you have learned from your lecturers. Okay, I'm going to focus only a few input device such as keyboard. So how you are going to rise all these input devices okay so make sure that you mention what it is it is an input device or, or output device and how okay how it is used or the function of it okay it is used to enter data and instruction into a computer by pressing the keys or it contain keys user press to enter data and instruction into a computer Use your logic. Key has keys. So we use the keys to enter data into a computer. All right. I'm going to fast forward to pointing device. Okay. It is an input device. Okay. Similar to keyboard. All right. They are input devices that allow user to control a pointer on the screen. You can see that my pointer is moving. I go to hand tool, okay, I can go anywhere I like or I can select object, highlight, click or do a lot of things. Okay, an example of pointing devices are mouse, trackball, touchpad and many more. Okay. Since I'm only, what, uh, skipping, this is only a recap. So I'm going to fast forward to biometric input because biometric input is quite tough. You need to remember that when the mention of bio or biometric in input, it involves with human traits. T R A I T S or human characteristic. Okay, the example are fingerprint reader, hand geometry system, face recognition system, retina iris recognition scanner, voice verification system, and signature verification system. These are the examples that you need to know. It use human or personal characteristic. Okay, I believe you can read on your own. All right, game controllers. The function is, it is an input device that direct movement and action of on-screen objects. Okay, when you play games, you use gamepad, joystick and wheel, like guns, motion sensing controller, dance pad. Okay, if you... Uh, using game controllers but i know that most students using their smartphone right now but it is good to know this is gamepad joystick we have a few examples all right let's look for output device okay before we proceed to input and output device plus assistive technology. So what is output device? Okay, this is not the definition. This is the definition of uh, output. Make sure that you use the correct definition. So what is output device? Look at uh, slide number four. Okay, it is a hardware. Okay, that display uh information to people all right so type of output device display device such as monitor printer speaker headphone 
data projectors, interactive whiteboard, and force feedback game controllers. If you forgot to write data and you write projectors only, it is acceptable. It's okay. Since projectors uh, relate to IT. When we think of projectors, we think of something related to IT. But if you forgot to write interactive whiteboard, it will just be usual whiteboard without the application of IT. Just normal whiteboard, uh, whiteboard that you just write using the, what you call that, um, markers. All right. So last but not least, force feedback game controllers. Okay, not only game controllers, we have this additional function for feedback for output. All right, so let's see. Okay, I'm going to skip. Happy reading. Okay, actually, I want to show you the force feedback game controller, but this come to my attention, interactive whiteboard. Because you can see that, okay, this user, okay, um, it can do something like circling this, um, what you call that? Okay, this item. Okay, it is actually input. He can input something, he can write. But it is also output. You can see what happened here. Okay, it is a touch sensitive device that display the image on a connected computer screen. So this is interactive whiteboard. It is not a normal whiteboard. So you see, okay, these are the type of input device that also can be output devices as well it is uh, it has more than one function okay it is a hardware device that has the ability to accept input output or other process data okay such as force feedback game controllers okay nak tunjuk juga okay andaikan ini sadaku my need for speed, dia telanggar pokok. So what happened is, dia telanggar pokok mungkin uh, steering bergetar atau uh, kerusi bergetar. So this is what we call force feedback game. It's air resistant such as vibration. Okay. Last but not least, before we stop here, assistive technology. So what is assistive technology? It has special function, okay, for certain um, use. There are two types of assistive technology. The first one is input and the second one is output, of course. These are the example. Please memorize it. Okay, I repeat. You can memorize any of these examples. Choose the one that uh, easier for you to remember and write. Okay, voice recognition. Large key keyboard. On screen keyboard. Small keys keyboard. Kenapa nak small eh? Lebih baik besar. Okay, hand strap typing aid. Mouth stick. Head mountain. Mounted pointer, braille keyboard. Okay, this is voice recognition. Okay, large key keyboard. This is very important. Okay, if you ask me, I would like to memorize this one. Okay, the function is provide a correcting factors for people with slight fine motor disabilities. Okay, so siapa yang selalu type, banyak typo tu mungkin boleh guna large key keyboard. 
Okay, saya gurau je. Alright, virtual keyboard. Okay, we have a lot of keyboard for special function. Even for accountant, they have special uh, keyboard for them to make it easier to input a uh, calculation. Okay, apart for that, from that, we have hand strap typing aid. Mouse pick, people, will, uh, people with disabilities, okay, they will find mouse pick helpful, okay, provide the user which has little or no arm control to control the pointing device using mouse. So that is what, why it is called mouse pick. Input and output device. Okay, ada juga head mounted pointer. Ada banyak. Okay, please memorize a few. Braille keyboard. So, this is for blind user. So that they will be able to type using the keyboard. Alright. Uh, this is for output. We have voice output. Put braille printer, screen magnifying software and talking word processor. Alright, please memorize a few. Okay, this is a very good assistive technology. Blind users can work with voice input which allow the computer to speak out loud the information that appear on the screen. Okay, which is a very good assistive technology. Braille printer as well. Okay, a specialist output device that prints information on paper in Braille for blind or visually impaired users. So when they touch the output of the Braille printer, they will be able to read it. Okay, so this is a screen magnifying software. Okay, it allow user to read, especially those with um, disabilities. Okay. All right, and we do have a lot actually, not only here. You can Google and find there are a lot of software and hardware specially designed okay or for assistive technology so so far do you have any question you can check here do you have any question all right, we have until 3.45. Now it's 3.34. Three, uh, okay, if you have any question, you can chat here. Semua dah study ke untuk UPS 2? Okay, jangan lupa UPS 2 petang ni pukul 4. Okay, terima kasih kepada Puan Samila. Okay, uh, disebabkan Puan Samila, uh, kita okay, boleh uh, mengadakan open lecture. Alright, terima kasih juga kepada rakan-rakan yang ada di talian sekarang. Okay, thank you so much. Ada yang tengah study lagi? Okay, you still have time. Alright, please do your best. Okay, kita ada masa lagi. Boleh tanya lagi ni? Tapi jangan tanya soalan uh, UPS dah lah. Okay, bagus. No question, madam. Hmm, sama macam waktu kita kelas ni. Eh? No question. Lepas tu semua thank you. <laughs> Okay, so I believe that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining the open lecture. Okay, good luck for your UPS. Make sure you study and 
uh, answer the question correctly. Make sure you read the question correctly and do not make mistake. Insha'Allah, you will do fine. Hmm? All right. So, thank you so much everybody. That's all for today. Kita sudahi dengan tasbih, kafara dan surah wakad. Habis dah kan?